Hey folks, and welcome to Carstar's very first Halloween episode, 10 Killer Facts About Arnie's 58 Plymouth Fury, aka Christine, the 1983 movie, Christine. Fact number one. As per producer Richard Kobritz, 24 cars in total were purchased to build the 17 different cars to portray the 1958 Christine Plymouth Fury throughout the movie. Of the 24 cars sourced, only one was already a real Fury, with the rest being 1957 through 1958 base Belvedere's, or Savoy's, modified to look like Furies. Yep, even back in 83, Furies were quite rare, and there's a reason for that which we'll touch on a bit later. Each Christine was built up for a specific purpose, some were restored to look brand new, some to look older, some for stunts, some for camera cars, and others optimized for speed and handling. Since all the actors chosen for the film were essentially unknown at the time and therefore low cost, a hefty 15% of the $8 million budget was allocated to the cars and the car work alone. Also, if you've ever wondered why all the other cars at the opening factory scene are all white except Christine, like I sure was myself the first time I saw this movie years ago. Well, this was because normally, the real Plymouth Fury's exterior only came in sandstone white with gold anodized trim and a buckskin beige interior. So, Christine's red on red color combo with the dart line chrome trim was indeed a custom order job. Of course, it's more fun to just think that Christine changed herself to the red theme to look more evil. This picky girl certainly likes attention choosing that bright color scheme in that case. Fact number two. Most of the Plymouths portraying Christine were powered by either 318 or 350 V8 engines, sending the power to a button-controlled, three-speed automatic transmission. However, some of the stunt cars did have performance upgrades to give a little extra kick for those aggressive tire-smoking stunt scenes like these. Even though the cars were plenty powerful and sounded pretty good too, it was decided that Christine needed to sound even meaner. So, those deep-roaring engine sounds that you hear in the film were actually recorded from the engine of a 1970 Mustang 428 Super Cobra jet instead. Fact number three. A real from the factory 1958 Plymouth Fury is quite a rare car today, with only 5,303 ever produced. The Fury was the highest performance trim available for the Belvedere at the time, so it was a popular model and they sold pretty quickly. At this point in time, it's estimated that there's only around 150 Furies left out there. As per Haggerty.com estimates, a mint condition 58 Fury is worth around $75,000 as of today. Their rarity becomes quite apparent too if you actually try to go on the hunt for one, even online. For instance, if you try going onto the popular classic car listing websites such as ClassicCars.com, BringAtrailer.com, or Classics.AutoTrader.com, you'll rarely find any listed. At the time of creating this video, there are none available on any of these popular sites for sale. One of the biggest factors in why so few remain today is due to their extreme rusting out issues. As portrayed in the movie, if left unprotected, it doesn't take long for these cars to end up as rust piles like this. Fact number four. Interestingly enough, the excellent Christine damage regeneration scenes were an afterthought after the movie was already completed. Since they felt it would give the film an extra special touch, special effects supervisor Roy Abregast was given three weeks to devise a way for the car to rebuild itself so they could work that footage into the final movie. To accomplish this task, Roy and his team created full-scale soft plastic molds from one of the Christine car bodies, including the whole front end, doors, rear end, and bumpers. The base car was then stripped of its engine and interior to install hydraulic pumps and cables that, when actuated, hold in the plastic panels to result in the simulated bent and deformed damage that looks similar to metal. Then, the footage of the bending plastic was played in reverse, making it appear as if Christine was repairing herself. It would sure be hard to imagine this movie without those great regeneration scenes, so I'm sure glad they were able to do it and pull it off so well as they did. Fact number five. The tricky and dangerous fire stunt scenes were worked out by stunt coordinator Terry Leonard, who also drove the car for those stunts as well. As if it wasn't hard enough to drive a blacked out windows car aggressively at night, driving a car completely engulfed in fire adds a whole extra set of complications. The car that was prepped for the fire stunts had a built-in oxygen system along with multiple layers of heat protection as well. Of course, Terry wore a fire suit additionally. The raging fire was so intense that Christine stalled out while Terry was backing out of the burning building as the engine couldn't get enough air to keep running, which is why we see the car come to a stop briefly before the next scene of the car driving over the gas pumps. The latter portion of the fire scene when the fiery Christine ran down Buddy was done by coating the body of the car with rubber cement so they could keep the car burning long enough for that excellent chase sequence. And boy, did they ever pull off those fiery scenes incredibly well. Fact number six. 
The nighttime interior dialogue scene with Arnie and Dennis was originally going to be recorded with a mock-up car attached to the front of a semi-truck driving at high speed. However, that plan proved to be unsuccessful as the noise generated by the semi and wind was far too loud. Not to mention, the actors didn't like it at all either and felt it was too unsafe of a setup and rightfully so. And who'd want to be in a wheelless half car bolted to the front of a semi-truck doing 80 plus on the highway? Yeah, bad idea. So they went the more sensible route and created a typical studio setup to simulate that the car was driving fast instead to great relief of the actors, especially Keith Gordon, who played Arnie, who really didn't like the prior frightening setup. Fact number seven. Of the 17 Christines built from the 24 source cars, only three survived the film and as of today, only two are known to be left in existence. One of the two cars remaining is this blacked out windowed stunt car currently owned by Martin Sanchez, who keeps it on display for all to see at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, California. The other car, which was the only pure Plymouth Fury acquired for use in the film, was the one most often used as the beauty car for close-up shots and such. This Christine Fury is by far the most famous of the two survivors from the movie and has traded hands multiple times as well as resided in a few museums along the way. Most recently, the car was on display in the Rochester Auto Museum in Rochester, New York up until they closed a few years back. After the Rochester Museum closed, the Christine Fury was sold once again and was auctioned off at the Saratoga Auto Auction in September of 2020 where it sold for a tidy $275,000. Fact number eight. In addition to those only two left intact screen used Christine Furies, there are a handful of what I'm going to call screen used Franken Christine cars that have been built by fans. And what I mean by a Franken Christine car is that after this Carnage Pack movie was finished, it of course produced literally tons of vintage Plymouth scrap that needed to be hauled off and put somewhere. That somewhere ended up being the scrapyard at Bill and Ed's Auto Wrecking in Fontana, California. Quite an unusual sight to see a big lot of freshly painted yet partially crushed cars lying around in a junkyard, isn't it? When classic Plymouth buffs got wind of where all these cars were laid to rest, and also that this scrapyard only charged $100 per pickup truck's load worth of parts, there was a mad rush of scavengers bolting out there to snap up as much as they could. A number of diehard Christine fans created entire Christine replicas from those mini scrap parts. Thus, the Franken Christines were born. So in a way, there are a few other screen-used Christines running around out there. Sort of. A fine example of one of these resurrected Christines is this one owned by a New Yorker named Joe Caldwell. This thing now looks immaculate too and has a cool added touch of a green light emitting from the engine bay that's visible through the grill. Ooh, creepy. Another equally impressive example is this one owned by a Christine superfan by the name of Bill Gibson, who tours his revived Christine around the country to various events and such, along with a bunch of other cool Christine movie memorabilia. Bill has practically made a career out of his rescued and professionally restored Christine that now looks about as factory fresh as one could imagine. One last little tidbit about Bill's Belvedere turn to Christine Fury car is that its factory build date was on Halloween day back in 1957. That's just spooky cool there. Fact number nine. In addition to the few Christine replicas made from the parts of the screen used Christines, there are some sizable fan groups of the movie and car out there with members that have created their own Christine Fury replicas that occasionally get together both in person and online to show off their Christine recreations. One such group, and possibly the biggest one out there, is the one named the official Christine Carr fan site, which is now organized by this Facebook group. This group is certainly the most active one currently, and does provide info regularly for some of the biggest Christine related events. The most recent event being last month when there was a 40th anniversary Christine showing, and Bill Gibson even showed up with his Christine. Fact number 10. And for us diecast model fans, we fortunately have lots of Christine model options that have popped up from a number of different manufacturers in recent years. Probably the best overall quality Christine model you will find out there to date is this excellent 118th scale one from Auto World. This beauty is fully detailed inside and out with opening doors, hood, and trunk. It also features working headlights too, which is quite a nice touch. Auto World also makes an unrestored version of the same 118th scale model, which is interesting and also has all the same great features as the previously mentioned model does. The next step down in scale size and price are a couple different versions of Christine and 124 scale from Greenlight. Although these models are fairly low in detail comparatively, it is cool that there is both a regular Christine version with clear windows and an evil Christine version with blacked out windows, 
These models have opening doors, but not opening hood or trunk. These two both cost around $35 each. Dropping down another notch in scale and price, Greenlight also makes 143rd scale variants of these same two models, however with less details and no opening parts. These run around $25 typically. Hopping down into the 164 scale realm, both Greenlight and Auto World make a few variants of Christine in this scale, but I recommend going with Auto World here, as their 164 scale models have opening hoods, which is nice to have even in this small scale. As with their larger scale Christines, there are both regular and unrestored versions. These run about $15. And folks, these are just some of the best ones out there in each scale that I could find at the moment, but there are a whole slew of other manufacturers out there that make diecast Christine Furious today. I will leave Amazon links in the description below to all the models I have mentioned here at least, if anyone would like to get any of them to own. Well, there you have it folks. Thanks for watching and make sure to hit that subscribe button if you like what you saw here. You guys are all great. See you next time. And a happy Halloween to all.